Hi, it's Robin. Got here an Apple II GS that I got uh, just last year, I think. I've barely used it. I was asked if I'd do a video about the new Apple II RPG called Nox Archaeist. And of course, I always like to run things on real hardware. So I thought this is a good opportunity for me to try out my Apple II GS, learn a bit about it, and get it ready to play Nox Archaeist which will be featured in another video on my main channel. In case you haven't been paying attention, this is my second channel, and this is where I'll be doing videos that are less scripted and perhaps, and don't necessarily have such a real point to them as the videos on my main channel. But it's still going to be 8-bit content about what I'm doing, what I'm learning, things that interest me. So I bought this Mockingboard version 2.2 from reactivemicro.com. And this is a modern recreation of a, of a sound card called the Mockingboard from the 80s. But this is just being newly produced. You can buy these brand new. So I'm going to be installing that inside this 2GS. And I also purchased this floppy emu, which includes... I got the deluxe, which includes this nice little case that you have to assemble yourself. But it's not very hard. And that, that plugs into the external floppy port. We'll be using that later as well. I'm real novice when it comes to Apple II hardware. I do own an Apple IIc as well, but they've both been pretty recent acquisitions, and this is something I just did not use growing up. My schools had Commodore computers, although when I worked for the Catholic school board in my town back in, what, 96 or so? They had all Apple computers there. They had Macs in the high schools and all the lower grade schools, elementary, primary schools, they had 8-bit Apple hardware. So it was kind of cool to still see that in, in use in the mid to late 90s, but I didn't actually learn much about it then either. So if I make any mistakes, please leave a comment. So the Apple II GS is the final Apple II model Apple released. Apparently September 1986. Unlike all the previous Apple II computers, this one has the 8-bit, 16-bit hybrid called the 65816. Same processor as the Super Nintendo and the Super CPU expansion cartridge for the C64 that I've shown in another video. So this machine sat somewhere between the 8-bit computers that were still going okay in 86 and the 16-32-bit computers such as the Amiga, Atari ST, and the Macintosh. So it sat somewhere between them. Anyway, to open this up. So I was trying to figure out how to open this up. The one video I found neglected to point out that there may be a screw here. So this one screw does have to be removed. And then these tabs can be pushed. I actually find mine really stiff. I found I had to just kind of pop something else in there. There we go. So it just has these tabs that you're supposed to push in, but it seems like mine don't push in quite far enough for it to come clear. And then the lid lifts off. Shiny. So well, there's the inside of it. Big power supply takes up like, what, a third of the case. And I included this RAM expansion card. And it looks to me like just a quarter of it's populated. So I think this is 256K here. The whole thing is a meg or a little over a megabyte. And it has 256K on board, so I believe mine has 512k. And the Apple II is famous for its expansion, except the Apple IIc, and that sold kind of poorly because it wasn't so expandable. So the Apple II GS, they added these slots in the back here again. So apparently the Mockingboard likes to be in slot 4 the most. So they're just numbered here, 1 through 7. There it goes. And then there's this jumper here. This is the speaker. Normally it's hooked up to the internal speaker, just mono. But instead, 
we can jump right over here. The installation guide sort of says like plug it in one way and if you don't get sound flip it. So <laughs> we'll do that. And I'll put the RAM card back in. You don't necessarily have to remove it but it's easy. And I was kind of surprised to see that the cards actually don't go right to the back. They don't have uh, headers or bulkheads or whatever they're called here. Stereo jack is actually just facing up. So I just have one of these little, uh, in a re recent video I called this one eighth inch. They're somewhat popularly still known as that, but actually it's never been a one eighth inch jack. It's a 3.5 millimeter jack. It's a little bit bigger than one eighth of an inch. So I got corrected for that. Oh, and actually I forgot, I still want to remove this back, this slot. So I forget what I did there. Pop the card out so you can remove the slot covers. You give this a little twist here. These are a bit funny, but you just twist them and then they pop off and then the little cover is removed. There. Twisty thing. What does that remind me of? The back of those, uh, those pins we used to have when we were kids. So now I'll put that card in and it's ugly, but I'm just going to use this, this little extender here that I got with, oh, I think I got with my smartphone battery case. Kind of ugly. So is there an official way of making that prettier? I don't know. And to close it up, there's just this kind of lip along here. And we'll just close it up. Okay, and while we're back here, just hook up a couple of the other things. So the floppy emu has, has this connector on the end. It's actually got this ribbon cable and so this is the internal Apple connector, and this is the external, and this actually just converts between them. Here's a floppy disconnector. So we'll just put that on there. There we go. And we'll attach power there in a moment. This is the Apple desktop bus, which if you're into vintage Macs, will actually be familiar. It actually debuted here on the Apple II GS, and then for a long time, all Macs used that same connector. And there is a headphone jack here for the sound. I might forgot to mention that that jumper we attached to the mocking board allows the system audio to flow through the mocking board, which is a sound card that quite a few Apple II 8-bit games supported. And that's what this RPG is. So it supports the mocking board, not the Apple II GS audio. So this cable will have both the mocking board music and the sound effects that come from the Apple II audio. So I won't be using that audio jack, I'll be using this. And I think that's everything there. I'm going to hook this up and we'll try and get some video capture here. So there's the Apple II GS keyboard. Oh, that might even be the same as some Mac keyboard. I really don't know. And there's the Apple desktop bus connector, which I'm going to plug in there. There's power. Oh, and right beside the Apple serial bus is composite video. And that's what I'll be using for video capture, even if it doesn't look all that great. And I do have a mouse, but it's going to be of no use today, so I won't bother plugging it in. But it would plug in on the other end of the serial bus here on the keyboard. Okay, I've got it hooked up. This kind of seems messier with all the cables and stuff than my normal Commodore setup, but oh well. Okay, and we'll try powering it up here. Okay, check startup device. Oh, I heard this. There's an Easter egg here. Control, Option, Apple. N. Woo! Look at that. Oh, that didn't last long. <laughs> Let's try that again. Okay, so Control Option Apple N. Firmware. Tools. Hardware. 
diags, diagrams, Hellman, Lentman. So there are all the people. That's a nice Easter egg. You gotta keep holding it down or it resets after just a few seconds. So I don't know how this screen's gonna show up on camera. Looks pretty iffy. But up here you press that reset button. Oh, there it's self set And right when it comes up, you have to quickly press this middle button. It's got the square almost like stop. I think it's select. And this is where you choose select default mode. It doesn't flicker like that in real life. It's nice and solid in real life, but on the camera, just have a different refresh rate. And this is where you can choose what mode you want the floppy emu to work in. Despite its name, it doesn't only support floppy emu emulation, but also these smart port hard disk or the uni disk. So if we just cursor over to smart port hard disk and choose that, default mode saved, turn off computer. Okay. I'm not going to go super into depth about this, but there is a good video about how to set this up, but basically, but yeah, you got your SD card. It actually came with this cute little BMAO, which is the name of the company that makes it, right? Big mess of wires, I think. Vintage software. And uh, of course you just use, I mean, it's just an adapter. And the Knox Archaist website gives instructions on the hard disk image to copy onto this. And then once you've copied the file over and named it correctly, then you just put it in here. And the floppy emu is just powered off, off the disk drive port on the Apple. Okay, so let's try that again. We'll power up here. Okay, a little sparkle up in the top corner. Shows it's loading. There we go. There we go, with music. Now, one thing I learned, if you're not getting music from your mocking board, then hold down Control, Apple Escape, and it pops into this menu system, and we can cursor up, return, go into the control panel, and, ooh. Did it crash? I think it crashed. Okay, I'm going to hit Control Apple Reset. And then I'm going to press Control Apple Escape. There we go. Back into the control panel. Boy, down to this to this slots option. Go to slot four and then press cursor left or right. And you can toggle between slot four being the mouse port or it being your card, which is the mocking board that I installed. So I think that means that actually with the mocking board installed and enabled, I will not be able to use the mouse port, which is a built-in feature. It's like each of those slots is available, but on the Apple II GS, they have another built-in purpose. Well, it looks like slot seven, your card, is available no matter what. So maybe the mocking board would work okay on, I've heard slot five is a secondary address if I don't need that smart port. But anyway, that's that was necessary for a while. I thought my mocking board was broken, but it was just I hadn't enabled the slot in in this config menu. So we'll try that again. Let's see that. Pretty cool speech. Oh, 
Okay, and there's Nox Archaeus booted up. In the next video, I'm actually going to be playing Nox Archaeus, and we'll take a better look at it. Okay, I think that's everything I wanted to cover. And I do have a couple other Apple II related videos I want to make soon. All right, thanks for watching. Again, this is my second channel. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. Thanks to my patrons for your support. Thank you for watching, and we'll talk to you next time.